Hi there everybody and welcome to this video. Today we'll be looking at deferrals within Business Central. Um, so what is a deferral? So a deferral is a tool function that we can use within Business Central to defer expenses and uh, revenue uh, across multiple periods uh, within the system. So saves us having to do that manually. We can set up a, a deferral template in Business Central and that will mean that the expense or the revenue is deferred automatically by Business Central. Um, so there's a few bits of setup that we need to do for this. Uh, just going to talk you through and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and post uh, an invoice. We'll just see what that looks like um, once the uh, expense or the revenue has been deferred. And then I'll show you some of the reporting options that we have around deferrals. Uh, so we can just run a report to see where our uh, deferred revenue and expenses sit as at that point in time. Uh, so the first thing I'll do is just set up what we call a deferral template. So I'm just going to search for deferral templates here. I'm going to open the associated page. And uh, as you can see, I've got none here right now. But what I'm going to do is just set up a new entry here. Uh, and I'm going to give my deferral template a deferral code. So I'm just going to call it 12MEXP. So we'll give it a description for 12 month expenses. Uh, obviously, we can set deferral codes and descriptions up as uh, we want to. This is just uh, an example. Uh, then I need to choose a deferral account. So this uh, drop down menu just looks up my chart accounts here. And uh, what I'll do is just check to see if I've got uh, an account. Uh, so I do have one for deferred revenue. Um, I know this one is uh, um, deferred expenses, but I'm just going to pick 50400 here as the GL account just to uh, um, show you guys on the demo. Um, so do bear in mind if uh, we want to set up uh, a deferral code for expenses and a deferral code for um, revenue, there will need to be different different GL accounts. Just depends on how you uh, you structure that on your chart accounts. But I can only pick one deferral GL account here. So um, if I want to have different deferral templates for expenses and revenues, I'll need to have uh, different deferral templates and point those to the relevant. Um, deferral account on my general ledger. So there's some fields in the bottom section of the page here under deferral schedule where I can choose the deferral percentage. So how much of my expense do I want to defer? So I'm just going to leave that at uh, 100%. Then I've got a few different options here for the calculation method. So I've got um, straight line and equal per period, which is based on uh, the period calculation. I've got days per period, which is based on the number of days within the uh, specific period. And then I can define that uh, calculation method manually um, each time I post the transaction if I want to. Then I've got some different options here around the starting date of my deferral entry. So I can choose for that to be on my posting date of my invoice, uh, beginning of the period, end of the period, or beginning of next period, or beginning of the next calendar year. So just some options here which we can use to determine when the deferral schedule begins. So I'm just going to leave that as posting date for now. Um, and the number of periods, you can see there's some mandatory, mandatory field here. So I'm going to set that as 12. Um, and the period description is an optional field here, but um, it would be beneficial to uh, fill this in. And uh, there are a few um, um, percent number signs that we can use here. And what that does is it just pulls through uh, a number of different um, 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 characters and uh, text into the description once the document is posted. So uh, I'm just going to set this as deferred expenses. I'm going to say percent four and then of percent six. And uh, what this should translate into is uh, deferred expenses and percent four is the month name and percent six is the uh, fiscal year. Um, so 
there is a, a list of the options that we have available to us, what we can type into the period description here. So I'll pop that into the um, description of this video. Okay, so now we've set up a deferral template card. Uh, what we can do, uh, we don't have to, but we can if we want to go ahead to uh, some of the master data within Business Central. So if I go to one of the accounts on my general ledger here, I can assign a default deferral template to this record. Um, so you can see if I look up there, it shows me the same table to which we just added that record. So 12 month expenses, the deferral code, and I can assign that to my GL account 10100 income services if I want the deferral template to flow through every time I uh, use that GL account. So you don't have to do that. It's optional. And uh, can assign um, those deferral templates in a few other areas. So if I go to my items here, I've got a test service item. I can also look up the same table here so I can assign that um, default deferral template that we just set up to an item card as well if I want to. Okay, so two other bits of setup before we go ahead and start posting a uh, purchase invoice. Um, so I'm just going to show you the accounting periods page first here. So obviously we need to set up accounting periods on our BC environment. These are set up at company level and you just need to be careful when you're using deferrals because you need to make sure you have sufficient accounting periods in your accounting periods table to cover the um, period for which you're trying to defer expenses or revenues. So in this case, uh, we've got um, accounting periods that go up until December 2024. Um, so if we try to defer an expense or revenue outside or after that date, um, the system would give us an error. So just one to be careful with. And of course, um, deferrals are posting into the future so you might need to set up some posting date ranges so these can be done against um, the allow posting from and to on the general ledger setup page but we also have the allow deferral posting to and from as well so uh, if you want to set up just posting date ranges specific to your deferrals you can do that on this particular page and obviously you have the user setup page where you can define those posting date ranges at user level as well. Okay, so that's all of the setup that we need to consider. So what we'll go ahead and do now is just input a document using the deferral um, template that we just set up. So I'm just going to go to my purchase invoices here. I'm going to go new. I'll select a vendor and I'm just going to change my type to GL account and I'm just going to select a GL account of 10100 here. So I'm going to input the quantity as one and you'll notice here I've got my deferral code field which you may need to add in using personalization or customization. Um, so I'm going to choose the deferral code that we set up and I'm going to go with a direct unit cost of 1200 and just to keep things simple, I will remove the VAT, but deferrals do work with VAT as well. Uh, let me just input a vendor invoice number. And what I'm going to do just to make life a little bit easier is I'm just going to change the posting date of this invoice. OK, so I've now got my invoice input and um, we have input a deferral code here. And what I can do is I can click on the little assist edit button here next to the deferral code and that will bring up our deferral schedule. And you can see a lot of the uh, information that we've got here. So calculation method, number of periods has all come through from the deferral template that we set up earlier and the start date is set to 010123 and that's because I said the start date calculation method was the posting date and I've just set that to the first of uh, the year just to make life a little bit easier. Uh, the amount to defer is 1200 because we said we wanted to defer 100% of the expense on the deferral template and I've put in 1200 on my purchase invoice line. 
And in the lower part of this page here, you can see I've got the deferral schedule. So it tells me that it's going to post 100 GBP in January 23, 100 in Feb, March, April. I won't go through them all. Um, and you can see here the descriptions come through. So remember, we used percent four and percent six. So it's replaced the percent four and percent six with the month name and the year. So you can use this uh, deferral schedule just to um, review the deferral entries that are going to be generated. Uh, there is another way you can get to that by going to line, related information and deferral schedule. So that brings up the same page here. And just bear in mind here that the deferral code here is assigned at purchase invoice line level. So you may have other lines on this invoice which may or may not want a, a deferral code assigned to them. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just show you a preview posting before we go ahead and post that. And what you'll notice is you've got a lot of GL entries here. Um, so you've got 28, it's normally a lot less than that. And the reason for all of those GL entries is because of the deferral schedule. Um, so you can see here, what happens is, is the invoice is put in and it's reversed. And then we've got postings, one side to the uh, account that I selected on the line of my invoice, the other side to the deferred revenue account that we selected on the deferral template card. And these happen for every month, as you can see, I've got February, March, right the way through to the end of my deferral period. Okay, so that's just to show you the entries that come up. And uh, what I'll go ahead and do now is just post my invoice. Let's say yes. So I can go from my posted purchase invoice and see exactly the same entries here. So if I go into my GL entries, I've only got six here right now, but that's because we're filtered by date. So I can go in and remove my posting date and I'll see the same entries here. So this is now actually on my general ledger. See, I'm on the general ledger entries page because we've now posted the document. And that is literally how you would defer an expense on a posted purchase invoice. So obviously deferral templates can be used in other application areas. You can use them on sales orders, sales invoices, purchase orders, purchase invoices. Also journal lines allow you to defer the expenses or the, the revenues that you're posting as well. And just one other thing that I want to show you in this video is the um, deferral summary. So I'm just going to search for um, a report here. So you can see I've got my GL deferral summary, sales and purchasing deferral summary here. And what these are, um, are effectively reports that we can use to report on our deferrals and where they are within the system um, at a particular point in time. So you can see here, I can use the balance as of, and if I change that to, for example, the end of January, 2023, I'll hit preview. And if I just zoom in a little bit here, <coughs> you can see that I've got my invoice, which was document number 108210. Um, the um, date is here, so the posting date, and we've got the vendor number and the vendor name as well. So it tells us the deferral account, tells us the deferral starting date, number of periods, and most importantly here, the amount recognized. So as of the 31st of January, 2023, as we can see here, we have recognized 100 GBP of our invoice, and there is a remaining amount of 1100 to be deferred, and the total amount deferred was 1200. So what I can do is I can just change the date here and run that as of the end of the next month. So I'm just showing you here as an example, of course. And now this time you can see the amount recognized is 200 and the amount remaining to be deferred is 1000 and basically just works its way down. And you can use this report to report on that, but you can obviously do other reports on your general ledger entries and, and so on as well. Okay, so that's everything that I wanted to talk through in this video. I uh, hope you found it useful. Thank you very much and uh, I'll see you on the next one.